All right, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, which is just to show a different way to get dressed in the Philomore, the great rap in English, or as people would say, the belted plaid or the great kilt. I don't like to do it uh, by laying it out on the ground. I have done that for many years myself, as many others still do um, or learn to do these days still um, but I have learned that there is another way there's there's actually one more way as well which involves pretty much what I'm doing now uh, some people as you see I got short arms and some people are a little have longer arms a little easier to gather it all up and keep it together neatly and pretty much straight so in order for me to keep it kind of relatively straight so that it's going to be mostly flat on the bottom I do fold it kind of like an accordion or giving the, these manual pleats in it like this. So then I get my belt. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the pattern because I know with this particular belted plate, uh, which section I need to lay the belt in so that it's generally long enough. Uh, usually I'll have to do a little bit of adjustment once it's on. And of course, 90 something percent of the time that's done in front of the mirror so that I can uh, get it nice and straight and look, and look even in the front so it doesn't look too short. Um, also, I will add I am wearing uh, a pair of boxer shorts underneath my my shirt here just to for some modesty purposes for getting dressed on camera I do know of a guy who was doing a video on how to sit whilst wearing a kilt and um, he fl kept flashing the camera and have having to redo the video <laughs> but anyway um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm going to pull it a, from my back to the front of me a little bit at a time. And if you notice when I placed the fabric on my belt that I, um, I sort of pulled out the ends of the fabric a little bit so that I knew where they were. If you don't pull out the ends when you place it on your belt, you're never going to be able to pull it around. Well, you could, but you're going to struggle quite a bit. Um, as you can see, I'm technically 80% dressed with it already. And I've already surpassed this, the speed of doing this while it's, uh, you know, on the ground sort of a technique. And it is kind of ridiculous. Now, it is, it is possible to get dressed rather quickly on the ground. Um, but I kind of shy away from that. I don't know if I'd want to do that all the time, especially if you were doing it outdoors, especially if it was been rainy and the ground's quite boggy. So now the nice thing about this technique is once you get the, the belted plate on um, and get it fixed, and when you're done wearing it for the day, you can actually leave it on the belt. You just undo the belt and just la relatch the belt with the plate hanging on it and and just hang it on a hook or something in your home and it's ready to go to go right back on the same way you put it on so one of the reasons why I also like this it's uh, pretty easy to get the f the front of the kilt quite flat and of course doing it in front of a mirror does quite help with that so a couple of things I um, I didn't put any of my footwear on in my, my kata or my either pair of my shoes my buckle shoes or my uh, or my uh, currents so I'm just doing it in, in bare feet bare legs right now just, it's really the point to show how fast you can get the the bulk of your clothing on uh, in a much more efficient way doing it in this process if anybody's asking um, I make most of my own clothing the cravat the neck scarf I've made that this waistcoat I'm putting on, I made that. The jacket is which I will be putting on shortly. I made that as well. 
Um, sometimes I actually get a pattern and sometimes I just look at pictures really good and draw my own pattern. Uh, so sometimes my, uh, my uh, extra pieces to my outfits aren't necessarily 100% accurate because I've done it in that fashion, but I made them on my own. And I do that, of course, to save money. Oh, and as you see here, I'm just prepping my belt to put my uh, my sporin, which is just a basic sporin, and uh, or a medieval pouch type thing I, I wear with it. Just I just put something that's plain and leather on, and then uh, my dirk uh, sheath or scabbard, or you want to call it, and I and I put I take the knife out to reduce the weight of everything so that I'm not fighting the weight of the blade while I'm fixing the the um the belt and everything. Now this uh this feel of more I'm wearing it's it's a four yard one and four to six yards is all you need. In case anybody's curious, uh during this period uh weaving looms were roughly around twenty five, thirty inches in width. So they would have to do eight or nine yards worth of fabric to get out a long enough play to do this. They would cut it in the middle and mend them together with a pattern match by stitching it. So um, anyway, what, what I'm getting at is that also this p particular uh, played, which is uh, an old word for, for blanket, not really doesn't refer to the pattern, is a very thick fabric. It's probably in the neighborhood of about 18 ounces per yard, or at least the the way the fabric feels and thickness so you can see when i put this particular one it's given me a beehive rear end <laughs> um, i have a lighter one that i wear um but it's not a, really an accurate looking uh tartan so this isn't a real tartan this is just a um well, the technical term is Bumby term is Bumby tartan. It's not a specific tartan, and and that's a better thing to wear most of the time. And I threw on my bonnet minus my white cockade like a fool, but um, I lost my white cockade. I got to make another one. But anyway, there you go.